10 vehicles. 24 hours straight. One hell of a trade. This is the B of Goodrich Tires 24 Hellback Trail Challenge. Presented by HP Tuners. Brought to you by Flex, Rocks, and Rollovers. We will be the first full body rigs to enter this trail. Maybe a handful of buggies have ever driven this thing. Oh, this is going to be a good time. I have never seen Rock with more traction. I mean, it tries to reach up and grab everything on your rig. Big. For our fifth 24 Helen back, we're visiting a small town called Parallel, the mother town of southern Utah. This place is full of history, from ancient petroglyphs to legacies of early settlers and much more. This year's base camp was set up at Fabin 801, an off-road fab shop and home to the famous rock lizard chest. Tonight when everything is done and everybody's interviews have been done and whatnot, we have a little game set up for to define who goes first. Hey! Where do you want me to park? Yeah, well, don't try it right there. Come see me afterwards. Okay. Getting spare parts loaded up for the trail tomorrow. We might need these bad puppies. Yeah. Hoping we don't. In this episode, you're getting an exclusive inside look behind the scenes. We'll check out what it takes to attempt the world's hardest trail ride. Learn about this year's drivers, their vehicles, and how they're prepared for our fifth 24 Helen Back. All right, guys, it is the arrival day and the big interview behind the scenes day. Pretty much everybody has arrived so far except of Ian Johnson and Ricky B with RCV Performance. Those guys had some truck trouble somewhere in New Mexico and they were stranded on the side of the road. The truck gave up. They're gonna be late. Other than that, food truck just arrived for the guys. And yeah, getting people hyped for tomorrow, man. Tomorrow morning, hell is gonna break loose. Let's get started with our first drive. I've never done this type of an event. We've done a couple things trying to prep and get ready for this. Welding gear packed in this one. First aid kit. I've got a spare drive line that'll fit either front or rear. I've got a handyman jack. I've got a spare axle shaft for the rear. I've got tools and a cooler, some straps and ropes, and that's literally all we got. I've got my tow truck in case anything goes really bad. <laughs> <laughs> He's the OG in off-road recovery. His off-road truck, Trailmeter, is known all over the country. He brought his so-called $12 buggy, which is built out of leftover parts. If there's one thing Rory subscribers on YouTube agree on, is that he's a living legend. I don't know about the legend status. I don't agree with it, <laughs> but I just keep doing what I do. <laughs> my name is Rory Irish. I uh, own Trailmater Off-Road Recovery in Moab, Utah. I've got my buggy here. This is the one I'm gonna compete in the 24 Hell and Back Challenge. I built it eight years ago. It's a Jeep four liter inline six motor. It's got a three speed automatic Jeep transmission and then an Atlas four speed transfer case. It's got a Jeep hood and a grill and an engine. And that's about where the similarities stop. One ton axles, a Dana 70 rear and a 60 front. And the suspension is literally their old coil springs I had laying around. This is my OG recovery rig. This is the one that I used to use before I built the wrecker. I have worked for 24 hours. We have done recoveries that have gone into the 20, 22, 25 hours. Luckily, I don't sleep much anyway, so this should be a fairly easy thing to do. It's the pacing on the trail that makes it tough. If it's going slow for filming and stuff like that, then it's hard to stay awake. If you're doing stuff and you're wheeling and you're driving, yeah, that's easy. You know, energy drinks are our friends. Rudy, what do you think about Rory's rig? I think you can put lipstick on a pig, <laughs> but in the end, it's still a pig. <laughs> he started his career at Matt's Off-Road Recovery. In fact, he's Matt's son. With Rudy's adventure and design, he's created his own outlet to build cool and often vintage 4x4s and takes them on thrilling adventures. His Jeep Cherokee, aka RudyCon, has conquered countless trails, but does he have what it takes to conquer this 24 Helen Back? I've heard about Helen Back and I've been following it for a couple years and so I was stoked when I got invited this year. 
and uh, just so happens it's, it's close to home. My name is Rudy Wetzel, based here in uh, southern Utah, and we're here to have a good time. As far as wheeling for 24 hours, I've never done it before. It's a very long time to be out doing that, specifically that, so I guess I'm just gonna get probably really tired. I might have to take a couple power naps or something. Load up on the Red Bulls. <laughs> Today we brought the Rudicon to uh, compete in Hell and Back. So in the Rudicon, we're actually running a stock 4.0 with the stock AW4 transmission with the NP231 transfer case. It's all stock. The motor has about 300,000 miles on it. When I built the Rudicon, I wanted it to kind of have a distinguished look. And uh, what I don't see a lot of is shock hoops through the hood. If I'm clearing everything out under the hood anyway to fit bigger shocks, why not shove them up through, you know? You can't mistake this Cherokee for another one with, with these being there. For axles, I'm running 2008 Super Duty axles, front and rear, and I'm running a full hydro steering setup with 40 inch tires. The wheelbase that I'm running on this rig, I think is around 109. So as far as parts go, I've wheeled this rig really hard and I haven't, I have yet to break anything serious. Going into this, I've already replaced all of my U-joints and throughout the entire system. I've inspected all my axle shafts and everything looks good. If I do break an axle or a hub, I know Peck Brothers are running the same axles and they've actually got spare parts. So as far as repairing my rig on the trail, I've got everything I need to refill all of the fluids. I've got all the oil, transfer case fluid, ATF, and then I've got my tool bag here. Um, and this has what I consider the bare essentials. My favorite hammer. I've got impacts, wrenches, screwdrivers, zip ties and duct tape. I can pretty much build or fix everything that breaks on my rig with what's in that tool bag. I've got my element fire extinguisher mounted where I can grab it or anyone around can grab it out the window. I've got another fire extinguisher up in the passenger wheel well. I hope we don't come down to, to using it, but if we do, I've got it. I'm not too worried about the trail itself. Uh, it's gonna be hard, I know that. If there's any horsepower-based obstacles, some wall climbs or something like that, this doesn't have enough in it to do that. But uh, other than that, I'm, I've got a super low um, roof height. With the heavy axles, I've got a really low center of gravity and uh, I can side hill like crazy. <laughs> I mean, I don't have too much body damage yet and uh, we'll see if we get any on this challenge. The Peck Brothers boys just surprised the two of us with some special gifts. So let's look, see what's inside of it. They got their own postcards. That's when you know you made it. That's when you know you, yeah, you, know you made, made it. it. Yeah. Man, with personal notes. This you guys cool. are making me cry, dude. Oh, this is so, so nice. <laughs> Personalized, you did spell my um, name wrong, but the rest is cool. <laughs> I'll just mess yeah. with you. <laughs> He's the creator of 24 Helen Bay. He lives for adventures that push him and his vehicle to the limit. He has dedicated his life to off-roading and has been on every single 24 helicopter. My name is Marvin Stelmo, I'm with Flex Rocks and Rollovers. I brought my 1973 Jeepster Commando with me here today. Full custom build from top to bottom, every single body panel, every single bolt on this thing is custom. It has a new look for this year and it's looking all fresh again. This baby has been around the block for almost seven years now. It has a 6.1 liter Hemi V8 in it. It has Tomwood's drive shafts front and rear. Then the front axle is a Dana 60 high pinion axle with 35 spline, 300M RCV performance shafts. Other than that, it has 20 inch KMC grenade bead locks wrapped with some 42 inch B of Goodrich crawlers. You got a funny little custom storage rack here with dry storage underneath it. I have a 13 gallon fuel cell, but I'm packing a rotor packs with an extra five gallons with me. We got element fire extinguishers throughout the vehicle. Jeepster has been on every single Helen back and has always come out on top at the end. This is literally the heart of Flex Rocks and Roller versus 24 Helen back. This is what we live for. This is what the whole channel is about. This is the fifth Helen back, and for the fifth Helen back, we knew we had to go big. We had to do something that's never been done before. One trail to rule them all, so to say, and that's really what we found. It's absolutely brutal, and I hope we can keep the traditional life that this bad boy makes it all the way until the end. This Jeep got a new motor right before the last Helen back and I would like to sort out any kind of headache that I could possibly have. So what we're gonna do is connect the HP Tuners MPVI3 to my OBD2 port and we're gonna just data log it and just make sure that nothing is weird, that it's not throwing any codes because tonight is the very last chance that we could 
possibly fix anything. Marvin's been driving this thing quite a bit lately, so right now, uh, thing looks good. I'm so ready to go to hell. I can't wait, especially with the people that we have here, a bunch of new faces, a bunch of people that have never been involved in something like this. You know, we're all internet friends of one way or the other. Everybody knows each other, so the vibe is super, super cool. And like, we're gonna have one hell of a group to tackle this canyon, so I'm excited. If you guys have never watched the 24 Helen bike, go back on the Flex Rocks and Rollovers YouTube channel and watch the last four seasons. You're gonna have a good time watching it and it's gonna be right between the eyes of what a true off-road or four-wheeler, whatever you wanna call yourself, is all about. We've got, uh, well, you can see through it, yeah. some jerky, some gummy worms, a couple of mountain houses in there to eat. Got a little recovery gear. I got some tools. There's method in there, see that? Right, no method at all, basically. It's whatever I could cram in there. It's all rusty, but it works. That's my tools. I don't plan on getting them out tomorrow. Fabrication, repairs, and off-road recoveries. That's what Paul and his Fab Rats crew are most known for. They can build just about anything out of nothing. Old iron paired with American muscle is their specialty. Tell me a little bit about you guys. You know, he, I'm assuming father, son. Nope. No. Not actually. Not even related. Not even related. He's just family friend. I've known him since he was a little kid. Yep. He graduated high school, needed a job, and I hired him. I'm Paul Cox. Hunter's my cameraman. Together, we're fab rats, yep. basically. And this is what we build. This is what we do. So an event like this is kind of strange. I mean, it's new to us. We threw a few spare parts in a box, and basically, we're rolling the dice. Hopefully, we come out unscathed and everything's good. The truck we're driving today is a 1965 Toyota FJ45. A little different than most Toyotas. Everyone's got a 40. 45s are pretty rare. There's very little of it that's still a 45 left. Just the body, everything else is custom built. Custom four link front and rear. It's running a LS motor, got a 408 in it, turbo 400 transfer case, off-road design doubler, and a 205. It's got good parts where it needs them. We'll see if they're good enough. I'm nervous about my window. I don't want to bend this. Other than that, I can fix anything, but I don't want to hurt the window. So I'm looking forward to just challenging myself, basically. I mean, going places that I've never been before and seeing what I'm capable of. We will as much as we can, but mainly we're in the shop building this stuff rather than wheeling. But so this is a great opportunity to go test it and see how, how the stuff we built actually works. I'm just excited. I'm glad Marvin invited us. I can't wait to go try it. I've watched pretty much every one of his Hell and Back series and they're good. I mean, a lot of people don't understand how much work actually goes into something like this. There is a ton of on the backside that no one ever gets to see. They're like, oh yeah, you're willing for 24 hours. But Marvin's been working on this for a year, trying to get us all put together. So I just want to tell him thanks for all the hard work and I'm excited, this is gonna be fun. Yeah, I've never tried to stay up for 24 hours wheeling before. I mean, I've wheeled into like one, two o'clock in the morning to get home, but that's just, breaking into the hard stuff on this trail probably. So it's gonna be interesting. I think the mental fatigue is gonna play a big part making bad decisions and breaking stuff then. Oh, we're nope. finishing for sure. Okay. We, got, we got a welder and a grinder. We can fix pretty much anything that needs to be fixed, so. Hang tight and don't miss out on this year's safety and recovery tips. Also, coming up, a special game that will define tomorrow's starting order. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mr. Rock Lizard himself. Thomas lives for the rock crawling sport. With Fabin 801, he's made himself a name, building some of the most capable rock crawling buggies in the United States. Dude, I love it. I want this one right here. <laughs> Today, he's not only our trail guide, but he's also the guy that first discovered this trail we're about to tackle. So we went out there a few times and I've, I noticed there was a couple little dirt bike trails up into the canyon. So I got with some locals and they all let me know, we used to ride that on our dirt bikes, I challenge you to try to drive it. it. Took us about four or five hours to get past the third or fourth obstacle and we lost the transmission. We've gone out there a handful of times now, we've broke the canyon open, it's a road all the way out and through. I'm looking forward to doing this with this group of cars because there's nothing like these cars we've taken up there. It's all been buggies. I'm Thomas Miser. I own Fabin 801. I'm a dreadheaded fabricator, man. <laughs> and I love to build buggies. So this is a chassis I built called Atombot. Super cool car. It's kind of compact. Runs a 4.3 Vortec V6, a TH400 from Monster Transmission. 
I've got a two-speed 4.3 Atlas. It's got just enough power to kick the car around, so we like to get rowdy. For the wheelbase on this car, I went with 112 inches, and that's because of the tire size, right? I wanted to go with a little more length because of this, the space the tires are taking up, and honestly, it seems to be really good just about everywhere on the West Coast I've taken the car. The trail's nasty, so I generally pack a big box full of spare parts, which includes a U-joint, axle shaft stub for the front, and then just a box full of tools. We got outfitted with a bunch of recovery gear from Factor 55, huge thanks to them. Soft shackles all over the car. I keep all this stuff right here. This is basically the only thing I take with me. I do take a cooler, which goes next to this. I strap everything down. The cooler you gotta have, we're gonna be out there for 24 hours. Probably kill all your drinks by, what, five o'clock. You're gonna want some more, so carry extra for sure. I like to run a garbage sack, that way we keep our trails clean. I'm excited for the gatekeeper. The gatekeeper is super nasty. The first few times I went in there, it took me probably an hour just to figure out where my car needed to be. And it was little light car. So right off the bat, I think the Jeeps are all gonna struggle. Dude, I'm, I'm a survivor, man. I go out and do these all the time for four or five days. So I'm usually just one liquid death. You ready to go, aren't you? I'm ready. Hey, is that a race car? Well, I reckon. <laughs> John has been an off-road racer for almost 10 years. He started at the bottom with a small Jeep and worked his way up to a full-blown so-called 4400 Unlimited Class race car. His gas pedal is more like an on and off switch. He's going to hell with us for a second time. Once we were called from Marvin to say, hell and back 2023. Heck yeah. I'm Kevin Larson. I'm John Grounds. And we are from Proving Grounds Racing. We are a Ultra 4 King of Hammers racing team. This was built in 2020, a Miller Pro chassis, 4400 class Ultra 4 Unlimited car, long wheelbase, so it's 119, LS7 heart with a turbo 400 Atlas transfer case, uh, pushing about 830 horsepower. It's a little different than probably some of the other rigs that are out here. It's built to go fast, it's built to go over rocks, it's like the Swiss Army knife of uh, vehicles, so kind of the best blend of both worlds. For those that are watching at home and those that see this, I know that you're saying to yourself, oh, that's so easy. My rig on 40s could do that. My, my JK on 37s got that no problem. That's great. You might have that one obstacle, yeah. but you got another 23 hours to go. And it's okay. that attrition that you have to keep the vehicle alive. It's like man versus machine. So we got a lot of spare parts with us just in case the inevitable happens. You know, one of the biggest things is a flat tire. We got ourselves a Pro Eagle jack on the back the way if we need to get up and we need to get the spare tire off, we can. And underneath our spare tire is an actual toolbox. So we have fluids, we have tools, we have everything that we would need to either change a hub, change an axle shaft or anything like that physically on the car in case the inevitable happens. When you're selected for something like this, you know, you're, you're honored to take that call and to say yes and to accept that challenge. And you know, the crew that we have this season and this year, it's impeccable, like you can't replace it. Like it's huge names, huge contenders. And that's from the avid wheeler to the average enthusiast all the way up to a race team. So there's every element of wheeling capabilities inside of this group that's you know on this challenge. It'll definitely be um, one for the record books for flex rocks and rollovers, for sure. Oh, don't laptop. worry about the diagnostics. We're yeah, good. yeah, we need to get in there. We have to really see if this is okay and safe. So we're going to read the DTCs here. And oh as I expected, <laughs> what did I tell you, Graham, earlier? Uh -huh. So as I expected, we're going to have some problems here. Transmission range, sensor A, circuit range, performance. That's superstition. Okay, okay. Um, and then what about your generator L and F? That I have has nothing to do you know, with performance. You yeah, have yeah. no clue. I don't. Do not run I don't. Generators. There's no generator on this. Generators are awesome, man. That must have been from the original car that this computer came out of. Had a generator. <laughs> it might have had two generators on it actually. So what are so. you really doing? Just trying to roast us? What's going on? Here? <laughs> We're just checking things to make sure everything's okay. Obviously, this is not hell and back ready. They got a few things to address. They're going to be okay, and uh, we'll get them hell and back ready. Alex and his two brothers, Brady and Caleb, known as the Peck Brothers, they had originally planned to bring Caleb's twin turbo Jeep until it decided otherwise a week before the event. I have a red Jeep TJ that I've put my heart and soul into for the last eight months. We twin turboed it, and it was on the dyno 
the stars were aligning, eagles were flying, American flag was in the background, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere. I mean, like, it was hard. It was the worst feeling of my whole life because, like, every single thing that I had was in this Jeep. So much work, so much passion, so much money went into getting his Jeep done. The motor blew, obviously, but it was worse because it's like, we can't miss Helen back, you know? We finally got invited, finally going to be able to live our dream, and it was out of the window. Alex's Jeep wasn't even supposed to be done for another month, but after many sleepless nights, they managed to get the Jeep somewhat done. This thing was super far from being ready. We were like overnighted everything that we needed, and it was all three of us, all hands on deck, working around the clock. Days and, and nights. This build's so new, we haven't even painted the grill yet. Seriously, we started it for the first time, ran it down the road and back, put it on a trailer and came down here. This is a 2015 Jeep JK. It's got an LQ4 LS engine. It's pretty much stock. It's all rebuilt, new bearings and everything. We put a Texas Speed Stage 2 turbo cam in it. We have a 4L80 transmission and an Atlas II transfer case behind that. The rear end's a Sterling 10 and a half, air lockers front and rear, 538 gears. Stock shafts. Bone stock <laughs> shafts. Absolutely and yeah, stock we're shafts. we're worried about them. And I'm sure they've got at least 150,000 miles on yeah. them. So if they haven't <laughs> broke yet, who knows? We've got spares, so we should be good. We're running a worn 10,000 pound Evo winch that Alex is series. too proud to use. We don't have a tool bag. We told Brady to pack it. He forgot. We got tires and rims, seats. <laughs> we got a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> My wife cooked us up some chimichangas and wrapped them in some tin foil. And we're going to have nice warm chimichangas on the motor. Those are going to come in clutch when we've got the transfer case out of the Jeep <laughs> in the first three hours. <laughs> The wheelbase is like 113 and a half. Depends ish. on which side you're measuring. Yeah. <laughs> one, one could be two inches longer. We haven't measured. So this whole 24 hour thing, we're not worried about the staying up part. We're worried about holding the brand new Jeep together. <laughs> <laughs> We've got some super funny pranks that we're playing on every one of the rigs here. And they have no idea. And they have no idea. And I'm sure somebody's going to get ticked off. Honestly, just being here and hanging out with all of these dudes, like, I don't care if we bust the transmission on the first obstacle. We just had a riot talking to people, looking at their rigs. It's honestly an honor to be here and to be with everybody and to be a part of this. Everybody is so committed to making it here, which is freaking awesome. Like, like so many guys have had major hiccups where most other guys would have just said, you know what, this is not for me anymore, I'm done. And everybody's just pulling through and making everything happen in their power to come here and be part of Helen Bank. So, super pumped, man, it's awesome. I put uh, <laughs> put an LS3 of mine and I started it up and this little <laughs> was out on the front <laughs> and he takes a wrench and he goes, pat, 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 pat. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I go, what the hell's that? I turn it off. I start it back up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Nick is one of you guys. He applied for the Flex Rocks Rollover wildcard and got voted into this year's 24 Helen Back. He built Jeeps and hot rods in his spare time and has been wheeling with his dad all his life. Out of over 250 applicants, he won the battle to be invited. Helen Back, let's go. Will he do the wildcard title justice? My name is Nick Saya. I'm Sutter Creek, California. This is my dad. Hi, I'm Mike Saya. I'm from Valley Springs, California. Can't wait to hurt my back and get tired on this thing. And so this is my 69 Jeep Tour Commando. It's built by Mark Bertolucci out of Sacramento, California. It's got a uh, low pinion Dodge Dana 60 up front. It's got a Dana 70U in the rear. And I think almost every person that's been here so far has asked me what rear end that is, because you don't see them that often. They're a pretty cool rear end. It's got a six liter with a mild cam in it, monster built 4L60 and an Atlas uh, two-speed transfer case. It's got a fresh set of KMC grenade B locks for this trip and some 42 inch red labels which i hope are my uh my secret weapon i know everybody else has them too but at least it gives me a fair advantage to the other guys that are here didn't really know what the situation was going to be how much time we were going to have to cook stuff so we got some mres and a jet boil usually traditionally we bring a, a porterhouse steak and cook it over the campfire but this is a little bit different up here we got our milwaukee pack outs but we put 
snacks in it. So now it's a Milwaukee snack out. After I've watched all the Hellenbachs as they've come out. And then once I got selected, I went and rewatched all of them, I think another two or three times. I went through my own Hellenbach getting this thing prepped and ready for this event. I've been fighting brake issues for like a month. Ended up I had multiple bad parts at the same time and it was just a nightmare chasing that down. So, real thankful to have brakes because I think that's going to be pretty important for this trail. As far as spare parts, I try to bring everything I could possibly think of. I got U-joints, axle shafts, just everything, tons of tools. I, I really didn't want to get to the trail, break something, and then not have uh, the parts to replace it or fix it and get us going down the trail. I've had my kids in Jeep since they were in uh, car seats. They've been out in the wild with me forever. He's been driving my Jeep and my other four-wheel drive uh, vehicles since he could at least reach the steering wheel, couldn't reach a pedal. But looking forward to our grandsons and granddaughters, you know, getting back into this. And we try to take them out as much as possible. We just have a blast with them. This is gonna be an epic trip. So when the wild card got announced, you know, even though we worked together, he checked out. He was like all over videos, all over getting things done, making sure that this video was 100% right on, so that Marvin went, yep, that's the guy, right? And I'm sure his wife is pleased to death that this is gonna be over with real soon. I haven't stopped talking about it. <laughs> yeah. I think he has the best rig here. Most, most capable. Yeah. Why does he count? <laughs> I'm not a participant. He's gonna make, make all of us look like we don't know how to drive, and then our rigs are 94 Honda Civics. <laughs> Sean is an old school rock crawler and a local ambassador for the sport. He's not impressed by what you tell him until you prove yourself on the rocks. His job during 24 Hell and Back will be to make sure no one gets left behind. We've been uh, wheeling this area for about four years now. We like to build trails. This is one of the ones that we've worked with Thomas heavily on and this is definitely one of the best trails, I think, in this part of the state. Nobody knows about it, but it is, it is a good one. This is Goldie. She was built in 2007. It was a 105 inch car. We took it to a 110 inch wheelbase. We got uh, Gearworks thirds front and rear, 40 spline, spider tracks. We're running uh, 300M nitro joints. There was took. almost no expense, almost no, no expense almost no spared expense when spared. we went to rear steer. We got the Factor 55 goodie bag. We're gonna take that with us. It's got some recovery straps in it. Back here, we keep the special 24 hour hell and back. The important stuff for the trip, the coffee. We got everything to make our coffee for the night. We're not running any spare parts. Uh, I'm terrible about that. I do have spare Himes. That's about it. So far, knock on wood, that's all I've ever needed. Well, with it being our first Helen back, it's huge expectations because we got a lot of good cars, a lot of good drivers. I expect you know, there's gonna be some body damage. There's gonna be some hurt feelings. There's a lot of body panels out there and I watch this one cry when we take stuff out out there. Those guys are got some big cars. Yeah, and it's gonna be really cool running with these people. When we started finding out who was all coming and, and I started looking them up and I'm like, wow, these people are really cool. So yeah, it actually became a, this is a neat opportunity. I'm never gonna have this again because I might see them at Trail Hero, but we guide trails or we work a booth, so we're tied to it. So this opportunity to actually spend 24 hours in somebody else's face, you really get to know who they are. <laughs> Good, how Ollie you? made it. <laughs> Ollie is in the house. Man, I'm glad you made it. Yes. At least come hang out with everybody. Yeah, it's so cool. Holly is a true 24 Helen Beck veteran. She was called out to participate in this year's 24 Helen Beck. But due to a bad accident earlier this year, she is still in recovery. It's awesome to have her here today and help us cheer on the 2023 drivers. My name is Holly Fowler, AKA Mischief Maker, but I don't have Mischief Maker with me today because unfortunately I am not gonna be making this 24 hour hell and back due to my back injuries. The doctor said a big no, but it's okay. I understand and hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll be invited back next time. Just the crew that are here, the guys that are going out, it's gonna be hilarious. I think there's gonna be some shenanigans going on. So a little bit of FOMO. It's gonna be a good time. Advice for the drivers, have fun. Uh, hour 18 is always the hour where everyone starts turning a little tired. Um, so just remember, it's all about having fun. Everything can be fixed and we're all friends. Don't get angry at each other. <laughs>
Uh, that's something I'm working on right now. It's a wide open design chassis with a YJ body. So I'm just going to take my time and do that. And I'm hoping it's going to be ready for next year, around this time next year. Mischief Maker is becoming a little, I don't want to say old, but a little older. I think I've really used and abused him and he's just tired. And I just want to be able to put my foot down, get up stuff and not really worry about anything. So bigger engine and uh, just a lot more horsepower. Old Alay Bendejos. Justin from Warren and Factor 55 is a huge asset to our safety team this year. Nobody knows as much about off-road recovery as he does. Thank you for joining us for what should be a very fun, but long day tomorrow. <laughs> very excited. Uh, we're very excited to be a part of the 24 Hellenbach uh, series and also supporting Flex Rocks and Rollovers. Uh, for all of you that are attending, uh, everybody should have gotten a bag um, from us, uh, typically from the terrain, from what we've seen from photos, because we all don't really know what's happening, and also just some of the little beta from there. There should be a lot of trees lined in the canyon, so it should be a really good place to get around for anchor points. So that's why every one of you guys should have gotten one of our eight foot tree savers. So I did bring a few of the extras of our 20 inch soft shackles. So this is our long version. So this would be good if we have to do some things about around axles or maybe even through wheels to kind of lift up through that. So that's why it has this polyester coating on the outside of it. So it's going to have a lot more abrasion resistance than kind of the standard duty soft shackle uh, that we offer. So that's going to be part of that that's in the kit too as well. And then also um, our rope retention pulley. Uh, this is actually endorsed by Trailmater. Um, so this is like his favorite uh, tool to use. Winch light warmer. <laughs> that, so everybody should have one of our uh, lightweight stacks blocks. This is our rope retention pulley. This thing functions in a really interesting way to where once you had attached this to the end of the tree saver to one of the lines, the line goes through here on the end and then it drops down in between the fingers, allowing that thing to rotate around through there. But then when the line goes slack, the rope doesn't jump the sheet. I will also have a few fast bids that I'll put out through, through the group right here. I just want to kind of go over that. If we have winch lines that break, right, or we have extensions that break, it's really easy. All you got to do is this tool comes together in two pieces. You literally just thread this thing together, open this thing up. It'll grab the end of the winch line right through here and it'll expand down through here. Once you measure the tail length or where this varies, you literally squeeze the rope together, take the end of this, the needle, it goes right through there and it'll always start making the loop back in the end of the line. Once you're done with that, you can simply just come right back through here, open this up, stick the fid needle down through the center portion of the winch rope. And then once you work the fid needle down through the center section, you're just beginning to bury the tail. Now, just like how the wire basket grabs onto the end of the line, it will work down through the center to where you can pull this thing down, bury the tail in here, take the tool off, have the end of the loop, pull that thing down and bury it back together. So it's that fast to fix the winch rope if you break it. Thank you guys for coming and being invited and supporting this event. And man, we are gonna put on one hell of a show. Thank you. We have a new partner on board that supports Helen back for us and pretty much everything we do in the future. Element fire extinguishers, everybody should have gotten one at the check-in. The special thing about these things is if something catches fire, you're hesitant of using a fire extinguisher because it's gonna freaking ruin your vehicle. That's the big plus point on these. They don't do that. They have no residue after you use it. You ignite it, you point it at it, it goes for about 50 seconds and it will eliminate the fire. Big thing is, is that you use it correctly. If something catches on fire and somebody throws you one, that you know what to do with it. Very important thing is definitely to hold it by the base. Don't hold it up here. This thing is getting hot. So definitely always hold it on the bottom of the base and the black part of it. Step one is you remove this little cap here on the top and discard it. You don't need it. So that goes away. Then you remove the starter from the base of it. This is your starter right here. You push it against the starter and you scratch it. To define tomorrow's running order or at least who's going to go first we came up with a little game by first i mean behind thomas obviously thomas is the trail guide thomas is our fearless lead leader in his buggy this is his home trail so one person is out of the question unfortunately that's john grounds because we've made pretty bad experiences with really high horsepower vehicles being in the middle or in the front of the pack. <laughs> Big rocks flying through windshields, we're trying to avoid that. We have three soft shackles provided by Factor 55. Whoever got the most soft shackles into the wheel of the BFG tire wins, and that person gets to pick who yeah. runs first. Hey, hey, 
got the horse. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice shot, bud. That's what happens when you get two. We got a lead piece? Oh, that's oh, way oh, too far. Oh, hey, don't take blow. some onion off. Take some <laughs> onion off. <laughs> it's not near as far as you think. There it is. Ooh. Oh. All right. So there's one. We had an amazing day. We got everything wrapped up. The media crew killed it. All the drivers killed it. Everything went phenomenal. So we just found out who's going to go first tomorrow, right behind Thomas. And now we have about 12 more hours until we're going to hell. Just the craziest shit I've ever seen. We're having so much fun. Ten vehicles. Twenty-four hours straight. Three, two, one, hell of a night. One hell of a trip. It's gonna be a long twenty-four hours if this is what we've got. I think it's gonna be a lot of winching we up this one. You just gotta be comfortable with your car. And that takes years and years of flipping it. Johnson is in his vehicle about to take on the waterfall. 